No, no, don't you do it. Stop, you stop. Don't you stop. You do Welcome to the review of I Cause a Catastrophe, the eighth episode of season three of iCarly, here on the Third Wind channel. This episode features a lot of cats, jewels, and dashing outfits. Shall we begin this review? The episode sets up with a meeting between Carly, Harper, and Tinsley, which is an important moment for Harper. I'm sure we've all been in that relatable situation where two people close to us are meeting for the first or second time, and you're not sure how it will go. And Harper is going to navigate this tricky scenario in this episode. Carly and Tinsley are both motivated to be friends because of how important Harper is to them, and Carly makes the first move by hosting a mini jewelry party for the three of them. However, to Carly's surprise, Tinsley shows up with cases on cases of audaciously expensive jewelry, and if it wasn't clear till now, now we know, Tinsley is 1% rich. She walked in there with probably millions of dollars in jewelry and in theory a lot more, featuring the literal heart of the ocean from the Titanic, which if real would be worth somewhere around $350 million. But I digress. Carly sets eyes on these big green colored earrings and she says she likes them. Tinsley immediately tells Carly to keep them and oh what a collapse of events this would trigger. Carly shows up there with a little baggie of decorative cosmetics. She clearly is not a material girl, so when she finds out these newly gifted earrings from Tinsley are $80,000, she freaks out. She doesn't know what to do with them, and she is scrambling. When she shares her feelings with the rest of the gang, they are equally surprised. But then, Spencer brings up the fact that he'll be helping the 20th annual cotillion at the Seattle Cat Museum, and it would feature a celebrity cat, which Millicent freaks out over. She loves this cat. As Spencer has an in at this event, Millicent asks to join, and Spencer invites Freddy along, who reluctantly agrees. All this gives Carly an idea. She can't bear the thought of having this expensive piece of jewelry any longer, and she decides she'll donate the earrings to the Cotillion's auction instead, which was a pretty impulsive decision from Carly, which unbeknownst to her will have some pretty significant consequences. Spencer then confronts Freddy about why he was reluctant about joining to the Cotillion, and he admits to Spencer that ever since his childhood, he has been afraid of cats. Spencer, being the good friend that he is, offers Freddy to go through feline exposure therapy, which is just as funny as it sounds, and the two of them go through a pretty funny and entertaining therapy to work out Freddy's fear of cats, which ends up not really working, but potentially helping a little bit. On the flip side, Carly has now donated the expensive earrings to the Cotillion's auction and is making conversation with the lady that runs the museum who assures Carly that her donation will help keep cats off the streets. Carly is proud of the good deed she has done, and Carly and Millicent share a brief moment of bonding. When Carly gets home and tells Harper about the donation, she immediately tells Carly that she's made a monumental mistake, and we soon find out that Tinsley will be going to the Cotillion, and is excited to see Carly debut the new earrings at this formal event. She even tells Harper that she feels like she's finally bonding with Carly, which is of course a bit of irony for us, but it's important to note how seriously Tinsley is trying to bond with Carly, despite having very little relation to her. Carly and Harper then desperately arrive at the event to try to solve this intricate problem, and Carly feels that she'll be able to retrieve the earrings back from the old woman she talked to earlier. When Carly approaches Myrtle, the Catwoman, she is instantly praised for saving many cats with her generous donation, which of course makes it even harder to ask for the earrings back. But she does and is met with a terrifying threat from Myrtle, and Carly understands that there's no way to reason with her. Carly rushes back to Harper to discuss what to do from there, but then Tinsley arrives and we have this fun interaction between the two of them where she tells Carly that the earrings are Tinsley's deceased grandma's most prized possession and they are given to Carly as a symbol of trust in their new relationship. The situation is truly grave now. Carly calls an emergency meeting with Spencer, Millicent, Freddy, and Harper. A literal jewel heist is about to take place. Three of them are tasked with distractions. Harper with Tinsley, Millicent with Myrtle, and Spencer with the audience. Freddy is going to hack the cameras and the security system, and Carly will be stealing the earrings back. They have planned out these funny signals, and things seem to work great until a bunch of cats get out. This causes Freddy to miss his cue, and Carly is caught stealing very publicly, which Tinsley notices and is shocked and very hurt by. 
We then jump to Freddy recovering from the cat storm that he has just experienced, and Spencer comforts him and apologizes for the seemingly ineffective cat exposure therapy, and Freddy just wants to thank Spencer for being his friend and a good one, and says that he doesn't say it enough. This is when the celebrity cat jumps into Freddy's lap. Freddy grabbed his pillow on accident for comfort and Freddy's trying his best not to freak out. Spencer gets Millicent and Millicent sees Freddy with her potentially favorite celebrity and she exclaims that this is the best day ever and that he is the best dad ever. Spencer, Millicent and Freddy share this close moment, it's such a wholesome scene. Now we move into the fallout for Carly and she's talking with Harper who says Carly and Tinsley are just too different and that she'll have to spend time with them separately. Then Myrtle comes over and calls Carly a despicable human and says that if one of her cats relapses on drugs it would be her fault, lol, okay. But then Tinsley comes into the conversation and throws a little shade on Freddy, maybe to tick Carly off, but then Myrtle turns on Tinsley too, saying nothing but mean things and that's when Carly steps up and calls Myrtle out on her comments, saying Tinsley has been nothing but incredibly generous and nice to the event and shoos Myrtle away. Tinsley is taken aback by Carly's will to stand up for her and says that that's what a friend would do and offers to reconcile by buying the earrings in the auction. And then in our final scene, we see our whole gang including Tinsley having a good time and it seems like everyone is getting along and we can see Carly with her new earrings on. That's what happened in this episode, but now it's time to get into the nitty gritty details, the analytical part of this review, starting with character spotlights, and as always, we start with Carly. Carly is fairly tense through this whole episode, and I wouldn't say it's unreasonable. Harper has been supporting Carly in the many situations she's gotten into over the last three years, and as in any natural friendship, this is a two-way street. Carly will reciprocate. Harper has a new girlfriend now and she really wants her best friend Carly to get along with her and Carly definitely makes an effort. However, at least in this episode, Carly is impulsive and I really don't understand her decision to give away this expensive gift. It actually feels more selfish than it seems as she does this to rid herself of the anxiety of having such an expensive item. If her goal was to get along with Tinsley, how could this have been the right approach? Anyways, this also shines a light on who Carly is. She isn't wealthy, neither does she come from a wealthy background, and it's the simple things that mean the most to her. In the end, however, Carly ends up making big strides in her relationship with both Tinsley and Millicent. Next, let's talk about Freddy. Freddy has hid his fear of cats for a long time, and when challenged to conquer it, his motivation to get through it is Millicent, which I'd say shows signs of a great father. He is rewarded with his daughter's approval in the end, and equally importantly, we get a verbal appreciation from Freddy to Spencer about their relationship. Freddy has built such a strong, unbreakable bond with Carly, Spencer, and Millicent, and I think it's really heartwarming. Moving on, Spencer. Spencer is getting his art on again in this episode and I'm always fascinated about how immersed he gets in his projects, whether it be building a cat castle or helping Freddy with his fear. I think this is one of the qualities that makes Spencer so likable and why his art ultimately has garnered an audience. He also lets us know that he's an expert of being the center of attention, which checks out. Also, he spent a summer in a well. The visual image that creates in my head is too funny. Our next character, Millicent. Millicent is heading into a big episode next week where her biological mother is returning, so she'll get her spotlight next episode, but this week, Harper was more in focus. The last two episodes, Millicent has been making negative progress with Freddy and Carly, but in this episode, we see some big steps in those relationships. I'm just curious to see how this will play out into next week's critical episode. But yes, our next two characters in the spotlight were the focus of this episode. Let's start with Harper. There are few feelings better than when your two closest people who don't know each other get along, and Harper strives for this in this episode. It works out in the end, but when it looked like it wouldn't, she was mature about it. It's also revealed that Harper has been dating Tinsley for 14 weeks, which gives us a bit of a timeline for the season, and both Creddy and Harper and Tinsley are looking solid. Tinsley looks to be here to stay, but I feel that leaves Harper in a pretty awkward spot in this show. Carly and Freddy are bound to move in together soon and Harper is spending more time with Tinsley. 
I feel Carly in Harper works well when they're both single and facing obstacles together, much like Carly and Sam did in the original. But in this growing development, I feel that Harper's purpose and standing in the show becomes awkward, and maybe Harper could be written out of the show. Is that wrong of me to think? I think it's probably a little early to discuss this, but I remain curious about what they would do with an eventual season 4 and Harper. Finally, Tinsley. Tinsley has roots in the show now. In season 1 we had Wes, in season 2 we had Pearl, and in season 3 we have Tinsley. Patterns tend to repeat themselves, but might become too repetitive. I don't know. We learn a lot about Tinsley in this episode, her extreme wealth, her generosity, her snobbiness, and her care for Harper and what she cares about. Although I don't love her character, I have to say this episode helped her case quite a bit, as it should, having a whole episode focused mostly on her. My gut feeling still says that she doesn't last, it just doesn't work out in my head, but alas, I'm still very excited to see where they'll go with this from here. That's it for character spotlights. I saw that Paul was credited in this episode, but to my surprise, he didn't appear. But moving on, let's take a look at Easter eggs. First, although in a typical one, what a big coincidence it is that they mention the Titanic and the heart of the ocean in connection with the rich person just after the tragic submarine accident. In their world, Tinsley could have been on that U-boat, and it's just an odd coincidence because all of this was of course written before the tragic event. Next, Freddy's fear of cats spawns from a cat stuck inside the walls of the bushwell. And props to the writers for this, it's a small joke in the episode I Quit in the original iCarly, a really fun easter egg. Next, and last, my favorite one, in the original episode I Don't Want to Fight, Carly gifts something to Sam, which she then exchanged for concert tickets for the two of them. Carly becomes very upset with Sam putting a lot of weight on the value of a gift from a friend. In this episode, Carly does something much worse and doesn't think much of it. A real change in character from Carly there and a fairly similar case. An intentional callback or an inspiration or a plot hole? I don't know, but I thought it was interesting. That's all for easter eggs and lastly, I want to do some analysis in the form of final takeaways for the episode. First, and probably not significant, we now have two very wealthy people in a relatively small cast, Spencer and Tinsley. Interesting to note their similarities and differences, but yeah, just a random thought I had while watching this episode. Next, and related to my unfinished idea on Harper being written off, don't you think it's strange how much weight they put on Harper telling Carly several times, why are we even friends, or I don't understand how we are friends? It feels like foreshadowing, but it's probably completely harmless and unintentional. Again, just another random thought I had. Moving on, Spencer mentions overshadowing Carly in family photos, when he says that he's good at being the center of attention. What family photos? Just the two of them? Them with their dad or their cousins or with both of their parents? I am so curious. Yet another detail to add to the file that is the mystery of Carly's mom. That will do it for this week's review, a lot of character development here and cats. If you enjoyed the review, make sure to subscribe, as most of you are not. If you are subscribed and want more, you can join the channel for more content and or perks, such as shoutouts. Shoutout to Third Wind Superfans, Corey, Sarah, Rose, and Jaden. Anyways, if you want to join the discussion, you can also join the channel Discord, and otherwise, let me know what you thought of the episode in the comments below. I always enjoy seeing what you guys have to say. Alright, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.